Hey, our next comedian coming to the stage is also a second year student. We're really happy that she's here. Start clapping now for Layla Ali. So, gosh, great crowd. Um, so I'm a pharmacist now for 20 years. And uh, I, I got into the profession because I wanted to have a good life. You know, like you see in the drug commercials? <laughs> Everybody's happy, they have friends and family, and they're in love. Instead, my life's more like the side effects they mumble at the end. They cause nausea, vomiting, depression, changes in personality, anal leakage. I hate it when young college kids come up to me all excited. I'm thinking of going to pharmacy school, how do you like it? And it's always awkward because I don't want to break their spirit, but I don't want to encourage them, you know? So I try to be real gentle. I'm like, well, the money's really good, and people think you're smart because you're a doctor. But nowadays you get out of school $200,000 in debt, you work in what looks like a monkey cage, and people come and tell you about their bowel movements. It's like digging a $200,000 hole in the ground, you line it with shit, you jump in, and you go, hey, I'm a doctor. <laughs> tell yourself it's going to be okay, you only have 30 more years, you'll be dead soon anyway. Later in life, in a desperate attempt to find meaning, you might even try stand-up comedy. <laughs> I had $75,000 in student loans when I graduated 20 years ago. Guess how much I have today? $95,000. At this point, I don't think it's going to happen unless a comedy career takes off. But. It's not my fault I haven't paid him, though. These companies are so strict, they fire me for anything. Mm. And my last job, this guy came in, he looked miserable, said he'd been constipated for three days. Said I would have never guessed, he looked like such a regular guy. <laughs> <laughs> Another lady came in last week, and she was really upset because, you know, she had to have a toe amputated. So, of course, I'm trying to cheer her up. I'm like, my dog has four toes, he's totally happy. <laughs> she was not impressed. And I told her, if it was me, I would definitely ask for 10% off at the next penny. <laughs> right? I'm mean, sure shit's expensive, right? I mean. So recently I did one of those DNA tests, and I found out I'm 50% Middle Eastern and 10% Samoan. But I identify more as Samoan because in the Middle East I'm obese, but in Samoa I'm petite. <laughs> So I've been trying to lose weight, but it's hard, you know? I mean, before I could diet for months. I could stick with the diet and be focused and disciplined. Now it only lasts, like, till the next meal, you know? <laughs> and I hate, I hate when you, well, they want to do the before picture and you stand in there with everything hanging out, you look like a big fat deer in the headlight. <laughs> Last time I did that, I went back and looked at the picture and I'm like, damn, look how sexy you looked. <laughs> My last boyfriend, we were together three months doing really well, and I thought, okay, I'm going to ask him a tough question. And I said, does this outfit make me look fat? <laughs> and he said, no, baby. Aww. He goes, the outfit has nothing to do with it. It's your fat that makes you look fat. <laughs> <laughs> See how the fat's sticking out there and there? Like, <laughs> honest guy, right? <laughs> so pharmacy is typically not a great place to meet men. Generally, they're older and sickly, but... <laughs> Last week, this really gorgeous guy came in, and he was like an outdoor rugged type, like a mix of Tom Selleck and Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> and he was, talk he was talking to me and flirting. I was wearing my brand new old navy blouse, showing a little cleavage, so I was feeling kind of sexy, you know? And all of a sudden, he leans in, he touches my hand, and with this, you know, looks me in the eye, and he says, do you think you can get me some Vicodin? <laughs> He wants me to get him a narcotic and risk my pharmacy license? I thought, oh, damn, he is kind of cute. Maybe I could drop a few in my pocket. <laughs> but then I saw on his profile I had a serious problem with erectile dysfunction. So I was like, oh, sorry, honey. Another thing I hate is when you make a mistake and people are so dramatic. Like, you know, you could have killed me? I'm like, okay, I mean, it's for acid reflux. You know, you might get a headache, an itchy rash. Maybe you'll hear voices for a few days, but you're going to be fine. You know? <laughs> but then they go on and on. And I, 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 you feel terrible, but i got to get back to the other customers, you know, so I don't almost kill them. <laughs> and then finally I had to come up with something to just end it, you know. I mean, I had to come up with a technique. So now when they say, you know, you could have killed me, I just go, yeah, I could have. <laughs> Pause and eye contact. The other thing that drives me crazy, a lady came in last week, she said, excuse me, where are your suppositories? I'm like, oh, what medication do you need? She's like, your suppositories, where are your suppositories? So I explained to her, suppositories is a way to get medication in the body. So 
So sometimes they're for nausea or ty- you know, Tylenol, but it doesn't make sense to ask for them. It's like coming in and saying, where are your capsules? So when someone comes in and wants suppositories, I'm thinking they just want to shove anything <laughs> up their ass. But if that's the case, there are other stores that have a much better variety in selections. <laughs> they have things that wiggle and spin. In fact, they have these new attachments that are amazing. But I'm like, this is a pharmacy. We don't carry that stuff here, you sick bitch. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.